So there's a really cool design you may have seen on a magazine or some other place where the focus of the photo is up front and al almost as if floating behind it is the text, going behind them in the space visually. And I'm gonna show you today how you yourself can achieve this for free using Canva. So with a few simple steps and a bit of process, we'll be able to end up with a photo like this. Let's get started. So the key for achieving this effect is to take an image, duplicate it, and inside that duplicated version, remove the background except for the subject. So in effect, you have a, the first image, the full image, and then you have the foreground, the one thing you want, usually the person or shape or whatever else. And then between those two layers, we'll put the text. So the core of that will actually rely on us removing the background of the image. Now in an article on my website, I went through a few ways that you can achieve this. It was for a different tutorial. Um, and one of the first things to consider if you can't find a good option, uh, if you don't have a photo program or anything else, there's a lot of great free options on mobile phones. So Android and iPhones. Uh, there's a lot of really great apps I've listed here that do a really great job of removing the background. So you would find the photo on your phone, remove the background and then send it to yourself to use in Canva later on. In addition, uh, there's obviously websites like remove.bg and a few additional ones. Now the, you might find that the quality for the free version of it is not quite sufficient, but it's definitely worth trying because this program works really well. And in fact, if you wanna pay a little bit, their pricing isn't outrageous, that definitely works. A couple other free options to consider. If you have a Mac, the preview application actually has a photo remover that you can work with in it. There's some great tutorials online for that. Uh, on Windows, if you use a Paint 3D, which is a free program that comes with it, it has a really great option called Magic Select. You hit that, and all we're gonna do here is select, just kind of zero in on the focal point where we want to remove the background. What's useful for this too is to really remember what you're trying to achieve. Since we just want to have the text kind of float behind our head, we don't have to worry so much about getting everything perfect with the pots and pans and lemons in my example. Uh, so in this case, I just select within that. I'm going to refine it a little bit. So I want to add this section here. And you know, you spend as much time as you like getting it absolutely perfect, but I'm just trying to show you a quick version. There we go. So if we say done. Now, as you can see, she's kind of, so you'd be able to save this out as a PNG and then re-upload it. And then that'll allow you to do the effect. You could do the same thing with preview, as I mentioned, if you're on a Mac. And otherwise, uh, another one you can do if you have access to a desktop version of PowerPoint, recently the new versions of it actually have a really powerful background removal tool. So same thing, you select the image, uh, you hit background removal, and then you can refine it. So this one went a little bit aggressive, so I'm going to go ahead and roughly outline her here, getting down this way. There we go. And that's a good one. So you go with that. And then if we right click that, now of course I'd want to remove that one. You'd want to spend a bit more time. But you right click, you save as picture. You can then export it out. So that's a photo, then you can upload it. Same effect. So there's you know a ton of ways you can approach this. And as I mentioned, they'll, I'll have a link to my the article on my website that describes a few extra ways for you to achieve it. But the core thing is is have the photo you want and then remove the background except for this subject in front of you. Now for my purposes here, let's go ahead and create, recreate this one from scratch. So this is all using Canva. Now, if in fact you have Canva Pro, all the better because it's recently launched a background removal tool that works really well. So I'm gonna, use, now you can see the photo is in the background. I have this photo here. I hit effect while the photo is selected and there's background remover. And the Canva version works just about as good as anyone that I've seen. So if you happen to have Canva Pro, know that this is an option and it's super fast and quick. Now, 
I'll do a bit of a warning here. The, the next parts are going to be a little frustrating. What Canva is going to try to do is take any one of these images and snap it into the background. Or it's going to try to take the foreground image you're doing and snap it in. So be ready with Command Z or Control Z whenever that happens because it'll undo that particular step. I, you'll see it three or four times as I'm going through here, I promise. So let's see if I move this around. Of course, it probably won't happen here. There it goes, perfect. So again, it, it removed the background image. It tried to apply this as the background. Control Z, and we'll bring it back. Be ready for it. It's going to happen a bunch as it tries to you know, guess which photo I want to snap into the back of the canvas area. A little frustrating, but just remember, Control Z or Command Z brings it back. No need to stress. So what we have here, though, and I'm you're going to watch me do this four or five times through the video. What we have here, though, now again, if I move her around, you can see she's in the foreground and the, the full photo is in the background. So anything I put behind this first one will seem like it's floating in that space. So let's move it back. Now, a useful trick, if you want to make sure it's exactly perfect, grab the front image and reduce the transparency. This will allow you to, to really refine it. You can see that it, if it's off, it looks like a ghost. Or it looks like it's kind of blurry. And if you just move it with the arrow keys to move it a pixel at a time, you can see if it looks crisp and clear, you have it 100% in front. So that's good now. Disappeared again. Control Z. Don't stress. Don't worry. So let's add some text into that. Um, I like the look of this one. So rather than trying to find a particular font, we'll do this. I'll ungroup, remove these ones, and let's get the text. Now another quick trip, uh, trick, you can always use, of course you can use any um, font or text that you want. Uh, what I like to do to ensure that the color I choose for my font works with the design is to pull a color from the design or from the image itself. In this case, this orange to me looks really beautiful. So one way to grab that would be if the you grab the eyedropper extension for Chrome. So if you if you're using Chrome, you go off to uh, Google and you search eyedropper extension. Simple installation. And after this, you can click in the top little dropper, click pick from web, and anywhere you click within here, it's going to give you that color. So if I kind of go into this rich orange, I'll click it, and now up in the top right, I have that exact color. So when I come into my text and I click over to new color, I can add that in. Now I wouldn't mind having a bit of um, separation for it. So I could add, either add a drop shadow or a highlight, a bit of white. I think I'm going to go with white. So I'm just going to copy the text and I'll paste it. So I have my two versions. I'll select what I will have as the background text. I'm going to make this white and then transparent so it's subtle, kind of fades into the background. Then I'll take the original one and then just move it up a little bit. So it just provides that little bit of a highlight to it, which is kind of nice. Now the last step here is we're going to grab our first photo. And remember this is the one uh, where we did our cutout. It's probably going to disappear on me. But that's all right. So we'll position and then bring to front. And actually looks like we'll have to do it one more time because we have the two fonts. And there we have it. Now I didn't actually change the uh, font as I want. We had delicious, or the text I should say. We had delicious before. This is dapper. But we can see the effect. Now, I tell you what, I would like to have better word than dapper, which means nothing to us in this context. Let's just even say food. those two above and it's because it's smaller let's grab the two of them now we'll grab our photo and position and bring it forward we'll bring it forward and of course the background disappears we never worry control Z it brings us right back and there we have it. You can put any number of words or any type of arrangement on that. And it's a simple, fast way to grab a really unique effect. It creates this depth within the photo. Uh, it makes it really polished. It's very cool, very fun. And you can imagine doing a whole bunch of things. Let's do another one real time here. 
Uh, let's do something to the effect of travel. Um, used, I'd used this one before, which I thought was a good candidate for this. Um, so we'll copy and paste. So she's in the background now. We pasted this on top. Um, gonna, like I said, you're going to be. I, I'm just a little bit hesitant because I know Cam is going to try to snap it into the background. So I just want to move this one around so I have control over it. So select it, effects, background remover. And again, however you remove the background, if you use PowerPoint or Paint 3D or Preview on a Mac or remove.bg, just get a version of the photo without the background, just your foreground photo. Now, as I mentioned, to line it up easily, we'll grab the transparency tool until it looks blurry. So what we're going to do is just move it around until it looks nice and clear, which means then we have it lined up 100%. And we'll come back and we'll make it go 100%. Control Z whenever that happens to us, and let's add some text. Um, in our case now, let's go with something really scriptive to describe uh, kind of like the act of wandering. I kind of like this uh, script of text. So let's go with ungroup. And let's say wander. big and bold in this case. You know, you need to play around to make sure that you're not obscuring so much of the text that people can't read it. That'd be very important, but you know, the more you can hide in a sense, the more interesting the design becomes. So, you know, there's going to be a bit of a pull, push and pull on that. Let's bring that to front. Control Z, wander. Now, let's just quickly try this as a red. So, the same trick I'd mentioned before as far as pulling out a color from the design itself to make everything feel cohesive. It just automatically means that what it, the text is going to work with the photo. Okay, so we'll grab that and we'll see if this looks better than the black or not. Let's grab this photo, we'll go position and we'll bring that forward. Z when it does that to us. I kind of like the red actually. That looks kind of fun. So as you can see, it's a really impactful and it's really simple to do relatively. You get a little bit finicky on Canva, but with Control Z, you're not going to have to worry about it. And by isolating one object from the photo, duplicating it, putting in front, you have a lot of options with what you can do for the back and the background and really create impactful designs for your work. So cheers to your great looking text behind your photos.